Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Tonight's meditation is based on John chapter 19, beginning at verse 28. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When my youngest grandson was about five years old, we took him to the local playground. And as most young children, he really had a great time. In fact, his favourite toy in the whole playground was the rope tower, which I have to admit at the time scared me because it seemed pretty high for a little five-year-old to climb up on. He spent quite a bit of time on that rope tower and it was a bit of a warmish day and eventually he came down and he said to me, I'm thirsty. There was no drink fountain in the playground and we didn't have any water with us. So I said to him, how about you play a little bit longer? and then we'll go home and we'll have a drink. It was then that he looked up, me, up at me in all seriousness and said, I need a drink of water. I'm so thirsty, I'm going to die. Can you imagine being so thirsty that you think you're going to die? Moments before his death, Jesus was thirsty. And it was no wonder after everything that he'd been through that day, the whipping, the carrying of the cross to the point of exhaustion, being literally hung out to dry and die on the cross for hours. In these words, I'm thirsty, we see the true humanity of Jesus. Yes, he was the son of God, but he was also the son of Mary, a human being with a human mother who felt pain and discomfort and now in his dying moments felt thirst. I thirst. Those simple words remind us that on the cross, Jesus experienced all the physical discomfort and agony of that day of his crucifixion. It reminds us that the suffering Jesus went through was more than emotional and spiritual. It was also physical. He felt the slaps, the whipping, the crown of thorns, the unbearable weight of the cross, the exhaustion to the point of not being able to drag it all the way, the pain of the nails, the suffocation of hanging on the cross. He felt his life slip away as he hung there for hours. He felt the thirst. He felt his final breath. I thirst. When we thirst, in Jesus, we have someone who knows what it's like and can sympathise with us. When we experience physical discomfort and pain and even agony, in Jesus, we have someone who knows what it's like. When we feel our life slipping away, and even when we take our final breath, we have someone to turn to. Jesus, who promises to be with us always and knows exactly what it's like. I thirst. There's something more in those words, though. I thirst. Jesus says those words in order to fulfill prophecy. In Psalm 22, that begins with the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There are so many verses that relate strongly 
to the events of the crucifixion, that many believe this to be a prophetic psalm about Jesus. In verse 15, we read, My mouth is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And here we are reminded of Jesus' words, I thirst. Jesus fulfills prophecy. And because of this, we know that Jesus is more than a man. He is, in fact, the Messiah, the one and only Son of God. Jesus fulfills prophecy. And because of this, we know that God, that Jesus is God in human flesh. And that means that God knows what it's like to experience discomfort and pain. God knows what it's like to die. I thirst. Jesus, fully God and fully human, was also totally innocent when he was crucified. And so we know that he was crucified not for anything he had done. He was crucified for our sin. On the cross, cross, he took upon himself all the consequences of living in this sinful world. He died for every human being who ever had lived and who ever will live. The Apostle Peter puts it this way. He bore, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. The physical thirst that Jesus felt reminds us of a deeper thirst that we all have. It's the spiritual thirst for God. Once Jesus spoke to a woman at a well, and he asked her for a drink. And in the ensuing conversation, Jesus says to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. On the cross, when Jesus says, I thirst, he's inviting you to ask him for the living water that only he can give. I thirst. My grandson was so distracted in the playground that he didn't realise how thirsty he was until he was so thirsty that it overwhelmed him and he thought he would die. And we can be the same. We can get so distracted by life that we forget to drink from the one who provides living water. Remember Jesus on the cross. Remember he is the source of living water. Remember that he has suffered and died so that you might live. And remember that whoever drinks the water that he gives them will never thirst. Indeed, the water Jesus gives them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Amen.